Norris takes the sprint win, but it's Verstappen on top in Brazil. Let's get into it. Welcome back to All Track GP and Interlagos definitely delivered the Grand Prix of the season so far. We had drama, red flags, controversy, a classic wet weather race and one of the best drives from P17 to a win ever. So let's start with FP1. McLaren's Lando Norris topped the timesheet in our only practice session of the Brazilian Grand Prix. His impressive 110-610 put him just over a tenth clear of Mercedes George Russell in second. The standout story was to be Haas reserve driver Oliver Behrman stepping in for the unwell Kevin Magnussen, who managed an exceptional P3 finish, less than two tenths off Norris's pace. Oscar Piastri secured P4 in second McLaren, followed by Williams' Alex Albon in fifth. The Ferrari duo of Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz played P6 and P7 respectively, with Nico Hülkenberg taking P8 for Haas. Rounding out the top 10 was Fernando Alonso in the Aston Martin and Alpine's Pierre Gasly. Notably, both Red Bulls and Lewis Hamilton found themselves outside the top 10. We then went straight into sprint qualifying. The McLaren duo excelled in sprint qualifying with a standout strategy that set them apart. Oscar Piastri claimed pole with a 1.08899, narrowly beating Lando Norris by 0.029 seconds. Their approach in SQ3 was notable. While others opted for single runs, the McLaren started earlier runs on softs, the same tyre they'd used throughout qualifying. Concerns over the tyre wear were offset by Interlagos' resurfaced track and softer 2024 spec tyres. Norris led early with a 108.928, but Piastri's second run on the same softs proved crucial. Norris had to abort his final attempt due to a poor middle sector, while Piastri's clean lap secured pole. Charles Leclerc took P3 for Ferrari, with Verstappen settling for P4. Carlos Sainz placed fifth, showing Ferrari's strong form. Drama unfolded as Lewis Hamilton exited in SQ2, and Sergio Perez managed only P13 in his modified RB20. Lawson and Behrman impressed with single lap speed, although Behrman's SQ3 run was hindered at the Senna S's. George Russell claimed P6 for Mercedes as their lone SQ3 representative, followed by Pierre Gasly, Liam Lawson, Alex Albon and Oliver Behrman in the top 10. Notably, Red Bull's timing error kept Perez from completing his final outlap. Time for the sprint race. Lando Norris clinched the Brazil sprint race victory after a strategic team effort with his McLaren teammate Oscar Piastri. Starting from the front, Piastri defended his pole well, while Norris soon showed some extra pace. Despite this, McLaren used team radio to coordinate DRS management, keeping a united front against the chasing pack, with Verstappen and Leclerc close behind. A key moment occurred on lap 18, with Verstappen finally overtaking Leclerc in a dramatic move around the outside at turn 4, displaying speed that suggested a fight with McLaren was looming. However, Max Verstappen finishing in third was later penalised five seconds for a virtual safety car infringement on the final lap, demoting him to fourth and promoting Charles Leclerc to third. But with a VSC on lap 22, McLaren seized the chance to swap Piastri and Norris. This strategy paid off as Norris edged out the competition by 0.5 seconds for the win, while Piastri defended hard against Verstappen. Post-race, Norris acknowledged Piastri's strong performance playing down his own success. Further down, Ferrari's predicted race pace advantage didn't materialise with Sainz in fifth, while Mercedes Russell and Alpine's Pierre Gasly showed resilience with strong finishes in sixth and seventh. Sergio Perez also mounted a solid drive from P13 to finish eighth, bouncing back from his struggles in qualifying. On to qualifying, initially delayed by heavy rain, was scheduled for Sunday morning in a rare one-day format last seen in Japan in 2019. In Q1, drivers struggled through wet conditions with Max Verstappen briefly leading before a red flag due to Franco Colapinto's crash. As conditions worsened, Lewis Hamilton found himself eliminated after a last-minute lap from Liam Lawson, leaving Hamilton frustrated in P16. Lando Norris barely advanced, finishing P15, while Oliver Behrman and Zhou Guanyu also failed to progress. Q2 was filled with tension as both Red Bull drivers, Verstappen and Perez, were eliminated due to timing mishaps with multiple red flags. Lance Stroll's crash at Turn 3 with less than a minute left ended the session abruptly, leaving Verstappen stranded in P11 and Carlos Sainz, who had also crashed, out of the top 10. In Q3, Norris delivered an impressive performance, taking pole with a 123.405, despite worsening weather. George Russell took P2 for Mercedes, while Yuki Snow surprised many with a strong P3. Incidents with Fernando Alonso and Alex Albon brought out additional red flags, though Albon managed P7 before his crash. Verstappen's engine penalty pushed him to P17, adding to the challenge for the championship leader in the main race. Time for the Brazilian Grand Prix, and drama started with Alex Albon unable to make the grid due to his qualifying crash. Then more drama pre-race as Lance Stroll beached his car in the gravel, causing confusion with an aborted start message. After a 10 minute delay, George Russell got a clean start, overtaking pole sitter Norris into turn one. This is the eighth occasion where Norris has lost pole position on the opening lap. Meanwhile, Verstappen began his charge, skillfully moving up six places to P11 by the end of the first lap. As Russell and Norris led up front, Verstappen's climb continued with calculated overtakes eventually catching Leclerc. 
Around lap 24, rain intensified and Nico Hülkenberg's spin at turn one triggered a VSC, prompting a strategic reshuffle as most front runners pitted while Verstappen, Esteban Ocon and Pierre Gasly stayed out, gaining valuable positions. With conditions worsening, a crash by Franco Colapinto led to a safety car, then a red flag, causing a 25 minute race delay. During the stoppage, leaders Verstappen, Ocon and Gasly swapped to fresh intermediates without losing position. At the first restart, Ocon managed to break away from the pack and built up a considerable lead. However, after another restart, Verstappen showed impeccable control, overtaking Ocon at Turn 1 and pulling away decisively. His lead grew to a commanding 19.3 seconds, marking his first Grand Prix victory since Spain in June. Behind him, Alpine celebrated a stellar result with Ocon and Gasly finishing in a 2-3. Russell took fourth after some close battles with Leclerc, who settled for fifth. Norris, though initially a contender, finished sixth with a post-race investigation into an earlier start incident. Piastri ended up eighth with a 10-second penalty for colliding with Liam Lawson, who claimed ninth. Hamilton completed the top 10 after a challenging race with Perez outside the points. Conditions in the Brazilian Grand Prix were as treacherous as they've been at any point in 2024, so it was little surprise that so many teams and drivers came unstuck on Sunday. So it's now time for our winners and losers from the Brazilian Grand Prix. First up, those that could have had a better weekend. McLaren's dreams of victory evaporated despite their race sprint domination. Starting with high hopes after Verstappen's grip penalty, they watched their advantage slip away. Norris finished sixth while Piastri's collision with Lawson earned him a penalty, dropping him to eighth. They're still leading Ferrari in the constructors by 36 points, but this was a missed opportunity. Lando Norris. What should have been a golden opportunity to close the gap to Verstappen turned into a nightmare for Norris. Despite taking pole position and having the fastest car, his race unravelled quickly. After losing the lead to Russell at the start, he remained stuck behind the Mercedes until their pit stops. The timing of the virtual safety car and red flag worked against him and the mistake at turn one after the restart dropped him to sixth where he finished, dealing a potentially fatal blow to his championship hopes. Sergio Perez's nightmare continues, spinning on lap one from P12 and struggling to make progress. Even with a bold wet tyre gamble, he couldn't capitalise. Losing out to Lawson in an inferior RB and Hamilton's Mercedes must sting. As Perez said himself, it was a total disaster. Aston Martin, the team's nightmare run continued in Brazil. After both drivers crashed in qualifying, the mechanics performed miracles to get cars ready for the race. However, Stroll repaid their efforts by spinning on the formation lap and bizarrely driving straight into the gravel before the race had even started. Alonso, meanwhile, went rally crossing at Juncao while running in the points and limped home in 14th, complaining of a bad back. Mercedes had a day to forget. Russell's frustration was clear when the red flag destroyed his early lead, while Hamilton limped to P10. Ferrari equally disappointed, Sainz crashed out and Leclerc never threatened the podium. Williams suffered a double blow with Albon's crash and Colapinto's instance, dropping them to ninth in the constructors. Albon's brake failure in qualifying meant he couldn't start the race, while Colapinto crashed out after the safety car, leaving the two with wrecked cars and a hefty repair bill. Haas lost Magnussen to illness with replacement Behrman struggling in his third F1 start and picking up a penalty. Hülkenberg's race ended in disqualification after receiving outside assistance following a spin. Now for the winners of the Brazilian Grand Prix and and there are some incredible performances to celebrate. Leclerc overcame questionable Ferrari strategy to salvage fifth place, showing great defensive driving against Verstappen early in the race. Yuki Tsunoda, meanwhile, had a roller coaster, qualifying an outstanding third and holding his own against faster cars. Though the red flag timing hurt his chances of a podium, he brought some valuable points with seventh place after Piastri's penalty. Max Verstappen delivered a masterclass, charging from P17 to victory in very treacherous conditions. The Red Bull driver showed supreme confidence, making decisive overtakes where others hesitated. Norris even suggested Max would have lapped the field if he had started from pole. With another 26 points and fastest lap, his fourth title seems inevitable. Alpine emerged as the surprise package. Ocon backed up his excellent qualifying with a stunning drive to second, even keeping Verstappen honest after the restart. Gasly completed a dream day for the team with third, defending brilliantly against Russell. This double podium launched Alpine three places in the Constructors' Championship to sixth a much needed boost in what's been a challenging season. That's it for Interlagos. Is the Drivers' Championship over? Has Verstappen done enough with his immense performance? Who will take the Constructors' Championship? And was this one of the best races of the decade? Let me know in the comments. And as always, remember to like, share and subscribe to OnTrackGP for more F1 content. Keep the pedal to the metal and I'll see you in the next video.